Okay, we're almost done with all these reviews. Anyone excited? Nah. They're actually kind of fun. In fact, I wish I could do this for a living, honestly. I enjoyed playing with computers. I enjoyed working with them. Back in the day, I had a computer business going when I started my other business, and the other business just took over, so I dropped the computer business. Not only that, Best Buy, Circuit City at the time, Office Depot, all of them big box stores kind of came through and took over the computer industry. And on top of that, Microsoft and Intel and Dell and HP all worked together to kind of shut down the mom and pop computer stores. So with all that pressure, I just looked at it, saw the writing on the wall and went with the other business. Okay. Now, looking at this, this is the motherboard I'm using. It's the Republic of Games Edition Maximus 8 Hero Motherboard designed for gamers. Now, I didn't go looking for a motherboard necessarily designed for gamers. That just kind of came about, okay? Simply because I was looking for a video editing thing and, well, quite a few different... Um, Motherboards came up. This one seemed to have the best features for the price, so that's why I got it. Not that I really wanted a Republic of Gaming motherboard. Now, we need to start talking about features on here, so this is going to be a little funny because i got to hold the camera in a weird way. Okay? i got to hold the motherboard in a weird way, and i got to move the camera a little bit, and we're having some glare. That'll help the glare right there. Okay, first off, talking about this thing for audio, it has Supreme FX Audio. What that means is this thing basically has a high-end audio processor on it, similar to what you'll find in a high-end amplifier, like a Yamaha or a Sony amplifier. It's using Japanese capacitors, okay? It has lots of different audio drivers on it, Audio drivers that help with headphones, audio drivers that help with speakers, has eight channel audio on it, which means if you do hook it up to a Yamaha speak amp or a Sony amp or a Pioneer amp, it can send eight channel audio to it. So eight channel audio from your games would sound fantastic. In other words, if you got a Bluetooth controller and you want to put this computer sitting right next to your home theater system, you got a 75 inch TV with the latest um, Dolby HCS sound, this thing will pump that out to that audio receiver. That's what that means. Networking technology, it has a packet prioritizer. So you can set the game as a priority, or your productivity as a priority, or video streaming as a priority. So if you've got three or four applications going once, it can set the video stream as a priority, and your Microsoft document as a second, or your Google, Google document as a second. So it'll make sure that the packets are getting in from your Netflix stream, and your Google Sheet comes in second. It says Intel Ethernet. Well, I don't really care about that, but it's talking about an updated gigabit, eth gigabit Ethernet. We have gigabit wiring in the house, hardwired Ethernet in the house. A lot of people don't do that because everyone does Wi-Fi these days. So I can take advantage of that. It has LandGuard. It has a surge protector on the motherboard in case lightning strikes set off the Ethernet port. Okay. It has a dedicated processor just for the keyboard on it, so you can set keyboard command shortcuts, and it will work off the shortcuts, okay? It has a RAM cache for gaming that works like, well, I'm not sure what it does, so we'd have to read it. It can also change the color of some of the lighting on the motherboard, okay? So let's look at the motherboard and see what we get in the box. First thing I was impressed about is I got a paper guide. How often these days do you buy computer parts or something and the guide is on the CD or it says download the guide? They don't really give you these kind of directions anymore. People just don't do it because it's an added cost. It costs them money to print this. And they don't want to print it. I'm happy to have it because if I didn't have this, I'd have to print it. 
I need to go through here and check my references to see where the pinouts are and see where the connectors are for everything to see how everything works. How do I put the CPU in? How do I do all this? It's all here, all printed. I don't have to go looking for it. So I'm glad to have a paper guide. I've been reading this all day in my spare time. So opening the box, we have the motherboard itself. And I haven't opened it and I'm noticing some scratches on it already and that bothers me a little bit. So I'm hoping that's just dirt and not scratches. Inside the box, now you have cables. You have six SATA cables. It's nice to have them. I already have a bunch of cables from the other one. You have a socket adapter. You have, uh, looks like, another adapter for a pinout somehow. You have an SLI cable. That's nice. If I go for a second motherboard, a uh, second video card, I'm going to need this cable. Okay? You have some standout screws. These are for the M2 connector. You have your typical back plate that goes in the case for all the input outputs. Okay, you have the DVD, and the DVD comes with a badge, a case badge, so you can put the case badge on there. We have a technical update on the motherboard, so there's a correction to the manual, and they gave me a printout for that, so I don't have to go looking it up. We have some stickers, so in case I want to put them somewhere. Remember, the video card came with stickers, too. These are labels for the hard drives and for the cables for the hard drives. So I have keybot stickers, I have hard drive labels, and I have cable labels. So I can label the cables that go which hard drive. That's great, but I don't remember which hard drive's which, so that'll be fun. And it came with a door hanger. So game off, you may enter. Game on, you shall not pass. Now, being a family man, this is kind of worthless, but it's kind of cool to have it. You know, if I was a teenager, I wanted to say, Mom, don't come in. I'm playing a game. So I could just put that on the door saying, leave me alone. I'm going to put all this back because I want to talk through the motherboard real quick. And this stuff, I don't want to get lost. So I'm going to put it back in here. I'm going to keep the directions out, though. So let me close up the box. And we will proceed. Now, one thing about this box, it was opened when I opened the Amazon box. So that scratching on there might have originated at Amazon and not with me. And that's why I'm a little irritated. Okay? I did open this box once. Uh, no, I didn't. Not if it's that tight to open. Okay, so opening this, let's see. Yep, that scratch. Oh, no, it's not. There's a plastic sleeve over it. Ha! I can tell there's a plastic sleeve over that, by the way. Yeah. There's a plastic sleeve over that. So all that scratching is going to go away. That's happiness. Okay? So let me pull it completely out of the box, which means opening this panel right here. And this thing is static protected. And again, I live in Texas. We have high humidity here, so I'm not worried about static discharge while I'm handling things. I am going to put a piece of cardboard underneath this because I don't really want this resting on my table. Okay? So there, we got some cardboard going. Let's walk our way around the motherboard because I read up on this this morning so I know where everything is on this motherboard. Now, up here we have, up here we have a power connector. Okay? Um, most motherboards have two power connectors. There's one here. And one over here. So we have our two power connectors. I'm just trying to see if I can zoom this camera out a little bit. Nope. So we have our two power connectors. One up here and one down here. Okay. Up here are the fan connectors for the, the water pump connectors in the center. And two are fan connectors for the CPU. One's a CPU fan. It's going to be labeled on the motherboard. So if you don't know what everything is, you just have to look at the fine print on there. I'm going to get in everyone's way in a second. I'm going to pick this up and read it so I know which one's which. Okay, the first one's water pump, and it, do, it says the other two are CPU. Okay, so the first one here is water pump. These other two are CPU. I don't remember what this switch is, so I need to talk to the switch. This is obviously the CPU circuit. Okay, here's where the memory goes. And when you're putting the memory in, and we're going to go through all this in a little bit, but you want to put it in 
since it's a dual channel memory kit, you want to put it either here or here. If I had four, it would take all four, but that's not what we're doing here. Okay? Now, I'm on the wrong page. Don't you get figure? I mean, I've got the... Um, motherboard layout in front of me. I know what the problem is. Okay, now, let's talk about this switch up here. This button up here is for checking the memory. You push it and it'll tell you if the memory's okay or not. Now, obviously, you can only do it while the board's under power. It won't do it when the board's unpowered, okay? And when you're putting everything together, you definitely don't want the board powered. So, that's only going to be good if you have an error code. Speaking of error codes, we have a digital display right here in this corner that this will show me something's wrong with the system and it'll give me an error code and I can look the code up in the owner's manual and it'll tell me what's wrong. I wish my old computer had that because I would know what's wrong with it right now and I would know how to fix it. Like if the CPU is inoperable, it'll throw a code saying CPU doesn't work. That's why I'm not starting up. So I'm really happy to have that feature on this motherboard. That is a great idea. I wish it was there sooner because it'll tell me what's wrong and how to fix it, okay? Going down here, we have another fan header, another fan header. This is the USB 3, probably for the front of the case. Right here are all the SATA ports, and looking at the side of this thing, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight SATA ports, and there's two smaller ones. This is an M.2 port where you would put an M.2 drive. Now, if you put an M.2 drive in here, it will disable two of these SATA ports if you're in SATA mode. If you put the M.2 hard drive in here in PCI mode, it'll leave these alone, okay? So you can mitigate this if you have the right hard drive. This will accept any M.2 drive, as far as my reading could tell me. It's just that if you don't have a PCI 3 drive, it will disable these two, okay? And then we have all of our pinouts. Now these pinouts across the bottom down here, I'm gonna look and see what they are on the owner's manual. Um, it says, this one is the system panel connector. So these are all the hard drive lights, the on off switches and everything are all connected across here. Those are always fun to do. I hate doing those actually. That I think is another cooling fan. It is, this is another cooling fan spot. This is USB three port, this is USB one port. This one over here is a USB 3 port, okay? Now, we're getting to the fun stuff Fun stuff across here because I'm not sure what some of this is. This one right here is the TPM connector. I'm not sure what that is, but it has the page number on it. We'll get to that when we get to it. This one right here says ROG extension connector. I don't know what ROG is. Republic of Gaming Extension Connector. That's what that is. We'll find out what that is because it gives a page number on that. So let's look that one up. It's page 1-39. Let's see what that is. Okay. One more page. One more page. Come on. Okay. Now. Uh, ROG. This is a connector for the OC panel, front base of the other ROG device. OC panel and front base are purchased separately. Visit asus.com for information on the OC panel and front base. Okay, so that's some sort of accessory I can buy. I'm sure if I bought the higher end um, Maximus motherboards, I would have it would have come with them. I bought one of the cheaper ones, so it didn't come with it. Okay. TPM connector, trust the platform module system, which securely stores keys, digital certificates, passwords, and data. A TPM system also helps en enhance network security, protects digital identities. So that is another extra thing. Okay. We have a T-sensor, which is the thermal resistor cable. The T-sensor connector is right here. We have another fan connector right next to the T-sensor connector, okay? Now, something I didn't get into. Right here, we have onboard LEDs, which indicate hard drive activity, system activity, and a bunch of other stuff. Here, we have a clear CMOS button. We have a reset button and a start button. The start button lights up when the motherboard has power. So, if this is lit up, you don't fiddle with components on the motherboard, okay? 
here we have a TV header. Let me look and see what that is. Okay. It says number 19. Thunderbolt header. I don't know what a Thunderbolt is. So let's look up, up a Thunderbolt. Okay. This connector is an add-on Thunderbolt I.O. card that supports Intel's Thunderbolt technology, allowing you to connect up to six Thunderbolt-enabled devices and a display port enabled display in a daisy chain configuration. So this must be something new that I'm unaware of, but it has a Thunderbolt connector. This one's an AFP connector, which I'm sure is on the next page. Oh, AFP, I'm sure that's front panel audio connector. Yep, that's what that is. That's a front panel audio, okay? Now, if we look at this, we have our PCI slot. Your video card, if you only have one, goes here. If you have two, you're going to put them here. Okay? Now, if you're using these, I'm pretty sure you're not going to get away with using these two, and you're going to be stuck down here. Now, these are mainly for video. These are for accessories down here. And there's different PCI cards, like a network card would go on this one because it's so short. I'm not going to use Wi-Fi, so I don't need a Wi-Fi card in here. Now, let's start talking about back panel connectors. So, i got to pick this thing up and turn it a little bit. So if we look at the back panel, it's got this big shield over the back panel, okay? Here's my audio connectors, and it has a spit-off out. This is an optical out. So I can connect an optical cable to the motherboard, or is this the optical? Ooh, what is this? This is optical, I'm pretty sure. It has an optical out, and I can connect it to a stereo that way. Here is the eight-channel eight audio. My, my system's only four channel audio, so I'll use these two and ignore these three. One of these is a microphone. I'm pretty sure that's a microphone. Here's my LAN port. Here's USB 3. This is USB 3.1. I'm not sure what that connector is. I'll have to look. Um, this is HDMI out. This is another kind of display out. This is the other display that I'm noticing on the video card, so they must be going away from HDMI on computer parts. Here's USB 1, 2s, USB 1s, a combined PS2 port for both keyboard and mouse. I won't be using that because everything's USB on my computer. Let me find out what that is. Oh, that looks like a reset button of some kind. So let's look that up and see what that is. Okay. I'm not an expert of this motherboard because I haven't used it. I'm having to look everything up. It is how it is. Okay. And boy, there's a lot of stuff on this. Number two, USB BIOS flash button. So that button's for flashing the BIOS. That's what that is. Number, um, that one port I said was weird is a display port. It's definitely for a display connector. And the bottom one is HDMI. The monitors I'm using, I'm using ASUS monitors. <laughs> ASUS motherboard, ASUS monitors. They have HDMI on them, so I'm gonna be using the HDMI. And I won't be using this. I'm gonna be using it off the video card. This has dedicated uh, video on the board. It is not part of the processor. So if I didn't want to buy a video card with this, I could get away with that. My processor is strong enough that I could get away without using a video card for most games. But that's not what I'm building this for. I'm building it for video editing, and I'm going to need that processor for video editing. Okay? Now, in the manual, if you want to learn how to connect things speaker-wise... Boy, this thing has pages upon pages of how to set up the audio and what all the ports are and how to connect everything. Now, I'm not going to take my I'm not going to sit here and go through how to connect everything to this motherboard. That's what the manual's for. If you just go page by page through the manual, it will guide you through putting the CPU in, putting the CPU cooler in, putting the fan coolers in, putting the memory in, putting the video card in connecting speaker starting it for the first time it'll take you through the bios the easy mode the advanced mode okay and the bios on this thing is far advanced over what i'm used to um hopefully i can get some screenshots of that while i'm working through the bios i should be able to cpu configuration platform system agent usb configuration all sorts of configurations in here so you can tweak everything update the bios I'm going to go through a BIOS update with this thing shortly after it starts. Most likely the CD that came with it will come with a BIOS updater that you can do directly from Windows so you don't have to go through the whole USB stick flash the BIOS thing. 
All right, so there's a walk around the motherboard. I hope you enjoyed a look at what's where on this thing. Um, I'm going to get it back in this box because I don't want to get scratched or anything. I'm so happy those aren't scratches that there's a plastic protector over the top of that. Although I can't seem to peel that plastic protector off. I don't really want to until it's in the... Yeah, there it goes. I don't really want to until it's in the case anyhow. Okay? So I'm going to put her back in her box. Keep her safe until the case is here. Up next will be the case review. If the case ever comes in, 